Welcome to this episode and it's a kind of uh, interview episode and I want to welcome Dr. Stuart Nunnally from Texas, USA, who is a colleague and also a biological dentist and I'm really thankful that you have the time and we can meet here on Zoom um, over I don't know how many thousand kilometers. It's just great that we too can use the chance to talk here. So thank you for your time and welcome on this podcast on on this youtube show thank you alexander i'm delighted to to have the opportunity yes perfect thank you so would you mind just giving us some information about you who you are what is your work what is your profession so that we can get to know you a little bit more sure well this this is actually my 40th year in dentistry i'm 66 years old And I, I've never been more excited about dentistry yes. than I am now. I have um, a holistic biological dental practice in Texas and yes. three partners. We have, uh, we see patients from all over the world and it's a, it's a joy to get to do what we do. And uh, so we have a very um, holistic approach to how we take care of our patients. Uh, for example, we're very careful about what materials, what dental materials we utilize. We want to make sure that the materials that we use are compatible with uh, each patient's immune system. Uh, we, we typically do a blood test to determine their compatibility, and uh, there are at least two labs in the world that will evaluate your blood serum to see Yeah. what materials are compatible. So we utilize that test frequently. Yeah. And uh, of course, the things that set us apart, I guess, more than anything are the fact that we were very careful about what materials we use. Yes. Yes. Uh, we, we, we don't typically uh, recommend root canal treatments. We, we really believe that there are better therapies than that. Yeah. And then of course, we also are very, very interested in the, treat uh, jawbone osteonecrosis yes. uh, that's a big part of what we do and, and yes. along with that with using nutritional uh, techniques and high doses of vitamin c yeah. and uh, platelet therapy all of those yeah. therapies those are the sorts of things that would set us apart from the traditional dentist yeah so your description actually could be exactly the description of, of our practice of our clinic here in, in near Munich. We are located in the south of Germany and also have um, four dentists working exactly the same holistic approach like you. And um, we come to this later. And so, you know, the most biological dentist, and you said you, you are getting really excited. You have never been more excited than now in these times. Um, I think it's because of the uh, the new chances, the new possibilities we have with holistic dentistry, with biological dentistry, as we call it here. Um, for me, for example, there was one key moment when my eyes were a little bit open for the holistic way. I think you had maybe also a similar moment. In my case, it was when a young patient who was suffering from epilepsy um, came to our clinic and his doctor told us, please remove the amalgam amalgam fillings and we removed yeah. them under protection um, uh, circumstances. Um, four to six weeks, he was completely um, uh, healthy again. So he lost this yeah. epilepsy. And this was for me one moment when I said, wow, what did I do right now? I just was doing my, my handcraft uh, like, like a dentist but improved somebody's life really. Do, did you have also a moment like this, which just was making like, wow, or, or do, you, do you treat people like this already for the whole 40 years? Or did you have a traditional approach from the beginning yeah. and it was a shift or something? I had quite a shift. Uh, interesting that you should mention this issue with epilepsy and removing mercury fillings we've seen that numerous times as well yeah, uh, over the course of of the last 20 years really it's the last 20 years for me 
where uh, we've had this emphasis on biological dentistry, mainly because I got sick myself. Oh, well, I, okay. yes, I, I, uh, I had practiced for 20 years, uh, very traditionally. And basically my practice was a cosmetic dental practice. Okay. And, um, uh, about 20 years ago, I began to have neuromuscular issues. I had a lot of weakness, particularly on my left side. Um, many um, uh, cramps that were cramps that you couldn't necessarily work through. Mm. And all of a sudden, I found myself uh, being referred to the largest Lou Gehrig or um, ALS center okay. here in the United States in Houston, Texas. We thought that I had the neurological disease of ALS. Well, which is well, quite a big issue if you have ALS. Oh, we would have had. Yes, yeah. yes. And um, actually, it was a long recovery for me. It was about a three and a half year recovery. But as it turned out, the primary issue for me was mercury toxicity. And so even though I had not put a mercury filling in in almost 20 years, okay. I had been removing them and not protecting myself. Yes, yes. So I sat there in this little mercury vapor fog each yeah, day, definitely. and finally it was enough to overwhelm, uh, yeah. overwhelm me. Yeah, so just interesting because I, I read a study which shows that um, the suicidal rate under the group of dentists is very high. And I think this is one reason that many, many dentists work or under the, the, the poisonous um, mercury toxins um, and have no protection. And, and so, as we both know, the mercury destroys just the, the, the neurons in the brain. Yes. I think this is one one big big thing which many many more dentists should should know about for themselves. I do too, and we know it's a, it's interesting how we don't get training no. in that at all, yeah. and uh, we we know that dentists have a very bad neurological track record. Mm -hmm. uh, suicide being one, of course, yes. we lead all professions in suicide. Yeah. Uh, depression we lead yes we lead the professions in, in in depression and also in uh divorce and mm. all sorts of of you know emotional and psychological issues that i think we can attribute yeah at least somewhat to our mercury exposure so for you it was one and a half years uh, of therapies are of, of recovering again and then it was what did it make with, with you and your mind with your view on dentistry mm -hmm. well it's actually three and a half years i was a uh, competitive triathlete and um, so it was about three and a half years before i could jog again wow. and uh but at any rate i'm back a hundred percent Great. And yeah, look, you yes. look great. You're in good shape. And you told you. me you didn't make you were on your bicycle just before mm -hmm. this this talk. Great. That's great. Yes. Well, I'm I'm so grateful to be back and have my health. Mm -hmm. And so yes, so I um I, I actually went to Montreal, Canada for treatment at that time thinking that I had ALS. And as it turned out, of course, I had this mercury exposure. But at that time, I was exposed to a dentist there who uh, is sort of the grandfather of holistic dentistry in the United States. His name was Hal Huggins. Yes, of course. Yeah, yeah we know him. Yeah. Well, so Dr. Huggins, um, he, he treated me. And um, as a result of that, I had quite a paradigm shift. And I, I went from being more of a traditional dentist Yes. to a holistic dentist very quickly because I began to see improvements in my health yes. after he did the therapies that he did for me. And uh, I, I was exposed for the first time to high doses of IV vitamin C. I had never been around that. It was the first time I ever heard that root canals might be a systemic health issue. Yes, yes. And of course, I had hardly ever heard the term that we call in the United States cavitation, <laughs> a cavitation being 
jawbone osteonecrosis. I was not really uh, familiar with the term, and here it was. I had these saying I had these lesions. Yes, yes which, me too. Uh, yes, and I had these cleaned out when I was in Montreal, and had very significant health yes. uh, consequence for me. I did much better afterwards. Yeah. So that's what happened. Well, great, great. So what what I always see is if a dentist is on the on the pathway of um, biological dentistry, he stays there, and he, it's just some something which opens it, his mind, and um, and you go this way, and you come deeper and deeper and deeper, and you practice it in your office, and you see the results, you see the recovery, like you did in person at, with yourself, you see the recovery yeah. with patients, and I think. Um, please correct me if I'm wrong, but I think this is the thing what you meant when you said it's never been more exciting to to with your profession with dentistry. Is this is it no, the feeling absolutely. Of, of changing really the system of helping really people just with your hands work? Yes, it's absolutely the most exciting thing to really participate in someone's yeah. overall health. Yeah. And as you know, we we um, we partner with wonderful, integrative, holistic physicians from around the world who, with yeah. they what they do and they do what they do best, and we do what we do best, and the yeah. patient works at it, and all of a sudden we get a good result. Yeah. So so we both agree very much, I think, about the importance of biological or holistic dentistry. Um, what about the, the 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 public or uh, how well is the bio dentistry how well it is is it known in the united states is it accepted fully is it very famous is it very popular or is it just um, a small group of um, conspirative dentists who practice this it is it is still relatively small but it's certainly growing yeah um, because the public not the public is demanding yes. uh, our services. Yeah. And the, the public is tired of the traditional, what we call allopathic uh, way of being treated. Yeah. And, and which, which primarily just puts a patch on a system instead of getting to the root cause of issues. Yeah. And that's what I love about um, do, being a part of holistic dentistry yeah. and medicine is that we're always looking for the root cause of the illness. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. definitely. So it's the same here in, in Germany or in Europe. We are also a small group, but it, it's really true that the group is expanding and uh, the knowledge, we try to expand the knowledge For example, in Switzerland, I, I, I was trained and worked together with Dr. Falls in the Swiss okay. Biohealth Clinic. And um, I give also some lectures and courses at Swiss Biohealth. And we are in the Swiss Biohealth Academy. And one of the aim is to, you know, we too know that there are thousands of studies who prove it, how bad are root canals, how bad um, toxins from, um, from cavitations are and so on. But it's not written in the books and we don't know actually why and many many critics critics from from this uh, holistic dentistry say, say that there is no study but there are thousands of studies yeah. and our aim is to make new studies also with the universities because if you um, get it in the head of the professors of the university then someday you get it in the books and when it's in the yes. books then it goes into the university and to the students and then this is the the way of thinking we have uh, maybe a new generation of dentists so exactly. this is so that not only the public um, supports us but also the university supports us this would be i think what do you think about this would be a really game changer I think it's I, I love that I love that approach because and even here in this country um, we have an organization it's worldwide now and you're, I know you're familiar with it the International Academy of Oral Medicine and Toxicology yes is now what we're doing as an organization is we're reaching out to students to dental students because Perfect. we're finding that more and more dental students are interested in the holistic approach 
so we're we're encouraging those students to come to our toxicology meetings and now we're finding that more and more of them are ready to uh, enter into holistic dentistry at the very beginning of their careers wow. so and and of course they're introducing their their other students and their professors to these concepts <laughs> yes, I understand. I understand what you. It's great. It's great to to go directly to the students. Yeah, we have to t take influence where we can. Yeah, definitely Absolutely. because it's so so important what we do. And so let's talk a little bit of what kind of patients come to your clinic. Is it um, just describe a little bit what what kind of patients visit you? Uh, the majority of our patients uh, have some sort of autoimmune disease or. Um, maybe some chronic degenerative disease. Uh, we do see many, many patients with cancer. Mm. Um, and um, of course, the major autoimmune diseases that we all know, like multiple sclerosis. And of course, um, well, all of, the, all of the autoimmune diseases that we typically think of, like rheumatoid and lupus, Mm -hmm. Those are very, very common for us. And we, we have found that dentistry can have a profound impact on those diseases. Yeah. So it's a, uh, we, we, we love to see those patients. We, it's, it's a joy for us to see them because we feel like we can really be a help to them. Yes. So do you have also, we have the same group of patients, so the, the people who are chronically ill, but what we have also is um I, I call them you know, you know the people who are healthy but want to do everything that keeps them healthy you know they heard about tunnels, they heard about cavitations so for example me you know I, I try to be and keep in a good shape as far as i can uh, mm -hmm. contribute to it and i myself had four cavitations and i was not suffering from any illness and had them removed but when they have been, uh, the surgery has been done, I felt very much different. You know, my mind yes. was much more clear. My energy was better. My, uh, my sleep was better. My decisions were better. And mm -hmm. I thought I was, I was okay. I thought I was healthy, but it's really a shift, you know. And I still think you have also the same patients who are not healthy, but want to keep healthy and then improve. That's true. Yes, and you know, um, more and more, Alexander, we see patients who maybe um, do not have physical symptoms as much as they may have psychological or yes. emotional or mental yeah. sim uh, symptoms. And we know now, uh, we have great studies that sh demonstrate the toxins from the bacteria that we're dealing with when we either remove root canal treated teeth or when we clean out cavitations. Those are very potent toxins and many times they have an, you know, a strong impact on the brain. Yeah. So uh, it's, I think, I think our ability to help uh, repair emotional, psychological uh, issues is, is maybe as great as the physical symptoms. Yes, yes, definitely. And in, in these times where the stress is almost overwhelming and we have to be in a, in a good um, physical and mental and, and emotional um, fitness. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, exactly. So let's let's hit the the nail on the head you know what are the for you the the three most or the five most important things you you think that people should know about we, we mentioned some already but let's summarize it so what is what are the three most toxic things because maybe some um, listeners or uh, 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 watchers do not know what you're actually talking about so what what is certainly be dangerous in the mouth well let's 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 do take the three most toxic yeah um, one would be heavy metals and the worst one would be mercury yeah and at least just as you have in europe we in america have used mercury amalgam fillings for years do you still use them not you personally but is it used in the usa it is used about 50 percent of the dentists still use mercury yes. fillings in this same country. here same here yes. Yes, we think it's uh, the most, I personally think it's one of the most 
absurd things in yeah. all of medicine and dentistry. How could we continue to do that when we know mercury's a, uh, yes. a toxin? Yeah. Uh, not just a toxin, but probably the second most toxic material on the planet. Yes. So, so mercury is one of those things that we yeah. want to remove safely, yeah. and, and uh, it certainly has no place in the body whatsoever. Yeah, and then just just cool. one thing you said one word one very important but remove it safely <laughs> you know this is yes. just for our listeners is very important so if you know that uh, amalgam fillings with mercury are toxic for you there's a good way to go to a dentist and ask him please remove it but the second uh, or the first question is how will you remove it how would you do it because if you have um, the fillings removed you have to ask and go sure that the dentist uses high security measurements that you have really the best conditions and uh, no mercury comes into your body but maybe you can explain it better in your language because it's your mother language well um no i think you're right in fact if you're if you can't have them removed in a very safe way by someone who's um very experienced in that in, in those techniques, then you're better off just leave, leaving it in because you're going to get such a mercury exposure if it's not done properly. Yeah. And so the very first, uh, the first line of defense in removing mercury fillings is you want to make sure the dentist is using what's called a rubber dam to, pro to isolate the tooth, to isolate the mercury so that, so that we don't ingest any of that when it's removed. So all the particles, because when we touch that mercury filling with a drill, we're going to scatter that material everywhere. Yeah. And so I, the, the other thing you're going to want to make sure is I would make sure that the dentist himself is wearing a respirator. If he's wearing a respirator and his staff is wearing a respirator, then you have to think, well, he's probably doing some very protective things here. So, those are two, I think, very important things. So we look like spacemen when we yeah. work, you know, yeah. we, if we're like, removing mercury, like we, <laughs> yes, yes. And our patients are completely covered. Yeah. There's no, no, their skin is not exposed. Their hair is not exposed. Yeah. And of course we have extra suction to yes. remove any of the yes. particulate. In our case, and in, 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 in our office, and maybe in yours as well, we like for the patient to be on an IV vitamin C drip yeah. at the same time, just yeah, because great. the vitamin C can, is so protective. It elevates our levels of glutathione, yes. and it helps. So it's a wonderful protective thing. And then, of course, um, well, um, let me just share with you this, and I'm, you, I'm sure you're familiar with this, Alexander, but our, this organization, the International Academy of Oral Medicine and Toxicology, has established a safe protocol. Yeah. Yes. And, that, and the protocol is called SMART. It's called SAFE. It, the acronym is for Safe Mercury Amalgam Removal Technique. So anyone in your audience could Google yes. IAOMT. IAOMT dot org and then the smart protocol and they would see a video on everything that we think is important in order yeah. to remove mercury safely. Yeah. So we are because you mentioned we are the one and only at the moment um, smart certified clinic in Germany. So this is a kind of oh, I'm a beautiful of that. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's so good. <laughs> Okay, so we talked about uh, mercury. So this is number one, I think. Okay, what is what is the second and number three uh, toxic things in the mouth we find yeah. in our patients? Number two for uh, us is root canals, um, yeah. and of course, I, I, for twenty years I performed root canals. I felt like that was a a good procedure, and who want you know we don't want to lose teeth. Yeah. So, uh, yes, exactly. so I, I, I did root canals and I just simply was not aware of research that suggested root canals had a high degree of toxicity associated with them. 
But once I became aware of the literature, I could not do another root canal. Yeah. And so I, uh, in fact, it's been a chief area of study for me for the last 20 years. I, I read everything I can about root canals, about uh, some people feel like they can produce a safe root canal. Some, most yeah. of us, including me, feel like it's yeah. not possible. Yeah. So um, over the years, I've seen some dramatic changes in people's health when we yeah. remove their root canals. Yes. And uh, so that in, in our practice, if a patient comes in and they, they're insistent upon a root canal, we're going to find them someone who can do a beautiful root canal. Exactly, exactly. It's, if if, if you once uh, are familiar and you know what happens with patients and how, how stupid it is to, if you know it um, and how dangerous is root canal, you never can do it again. It's just right. about, uh, uh, it's, it's ju we can't just do it. Yeah, so we, we act the same like you. It's great. Yeah, but uh, also for the, for the listeners, it's a, it's a really, um, for us, it's a decision from from the heart and from the also from the head. But um, yes. it's ta it's, it's partly very difficult to communicate to the patients because they come here and say, "Okay, please do me the root canal." But we cannot do it. Just believe us. We we are, um, only want our best. We want to protect. We want your best. And we want to protect your health. So this is for us. It's impossible. Well, it is for us as well. Yeah. And uh, we we know we know that the literature um, very conclusively demonstrates that you cannot get a root canal sterile. It, it will always be infected. Yes. And who and we don't we, we know even we would know even as a layperson that it makes no sense to leave something dead in the body. And so that's what a root canal is. It's a yeah. piece of dead tissue and it remains infected. Yes. And now we know that the toxins from those bacteria are very potent yeah. and can cause a wide range of systemic health issues. Yeah. And you have that, that toxic influence. Um, if you have a root canal, you have it 24 seven. Yeah. You, you can Correct. make, you can go to a holiday or to, uh, lose your weight or your stress or take in vitamins you can do all that that's all great but if you have 24 7 um, toxicity here in your your jawbone which is very important because it's very close to your brain uh, yes. with a nervous trigeminus goes directly to the brain exactly. or it's very the, the much blood goes into the jawbone and and, and the uh, it, it just spreads all over the body and this is this is very very important and many people think it's it's not hurting so why should i remove it but the yeah. difference is is just once the acute we call it acute is it the right word uh, so the chronic infection you don't feel it and the yes. painful infection okay. this is yes. what you feel but and many people say okay i don't feel it so it's not dangerous but that's not true the chronic things are often more dangerous than the painful things where you have yes straight pain and there are many, many disease states that are not painful. Uh, many, yeah. many, many cancers are not yes, painful. Yes, like a cancer, for example, yeah. Yeah, diabetes is typically not painful. Yeah. So the, the presence or absence of pain is not a good indicator of, no. of disease. Yes. And uh, so the, the third ahead, thing, I think it's the most um, unknown here, and maybe also in the USA, is the, the cavitation. Yes. So um, let's talk about that. How would you describe it so that everybody who is um, not dentist can imagine what we're talking about? Sure. Well, a cavitation is, a, as it relates to our jaws, is a stagnant area uh, in the jaw where there's very little um, blood flow. Sometimes there's no blood flow to that area. And uh, it's filled with bacteria. It's a very fatty area. Um, you have, a, of course, a wonderful dentist in Germany named Johann Lechner, of course, yes, who of course. has published a good yeah, deal on this, and he even calls it fatty uh, degenerative uh, jawbone osteonecrosis or something yes, like yes, that. Yes. 
Yes. So I, I'm, and I'm a, a big fan of his, his and his research. I think it's been very, very helpful. But we know that um, when, when a jawbone becomes anaerobic, when there's not oxygen or blood flow, we know that you, you, you build up these degenerative fatty cysts in this jawbone. And of course, when we remove that, uh, it looks like fat globules and it's, uh, it's very infected. Yes. And um, it has a very characteristic look to it. And we know now that the, there are a number of, of systemic health issues associated with this disease in the jawbone. We also know, of course, this is a, the most common site for these, but also these same types of osteonecrotic areas occur in the hip and they occur in other bones in our body as well, mm -hmm. usually from trauma. And so I think it's very, very important that they be recognized, number one, by someone like you, Alexander, because in, my, in, in the United States, there are probably not more than 100 of us who really okay. recognize this and who treat the disease. Wow. I, I think there's probably not, not that many. Okay. And so um, it's just not well recognized. It's in our country, the most common textbook on oral pathology talks about treating this disease, but it somehow is skipped over in dental training. And okay. uh, yeah, it's completely skipped over. So Dentists just are not trained in it and oftentimes don't even believe the disease exists. Yeah, so but it would be actually it would be very easy to diagnose it. Yeah, it's, it's yes. not a, it's not something very miraculous or something. You have just uh, yeah. we, we, we use the 3D um, scan and you can see it very clearly because the low density of the bone there and the, the bone density is low. It's just like like a hole in the bone, and as you yes. said exactly, the hole is filled with fat, with with necrotic tissue, full of bacterial virus toxins. With runt test, which is a very um, it's, it's a marker for the uh, chronic inflammation, for in short words. And we also um, I read some studies who found uh, glyphosate. Glyphosate. Oh there. yes. Yeah. Oh so yes. It's, it's something which nobody should have actually, but and it's easy to diagnose and it's it's really it's treatable. You know, we have we have a tool for that. We we know what to do with that. Of course. And what we of course uh, like to do, I think we've been using for the last eight or nine years now. When we clean these out, we we draw fl blood from the patients and we. Spray spin that blood in a centrifuge and remove their platelets and stem cells. And of course we then put those back into the surgical site and the healing is just amazing. Yeah. So just one, one specific question between two biological dentists, you know, okay. So you treat it the same like, like us, you, you make a surgery, clean it. Um, we, for example, we use piezo surgery technique and clean it with ozone, fill it with, PRF, the stem cells you told, and make a yes. really good suture. Um, many many patients, especially from the US, come uh, or, or ask us on via email or Facebook or so, and they describe a technique to inject ozone there. Do you, is it is it very famous in in USA? Do what is your opinion about that? Does it work in your opinion? Is it an alternative really? I, I, so we do do it here in Germany, and to be honest, if if I clean a cavitation, I cannot. I do. I do not think that an injection of ozone could really cure the bone and make healthy bone again. So this is my opinion. But what do you think no, about that? I, I agree totally. The um, to inject ozone into an area that has very very little blood flow. Um, you may eliminate the bacteria temporarily, but anytime there's an area in the body that has minimal blood flow, it's an area that tends to repopulate with bacteria. Yes. 
what what yeah. else should it do yeah of course it's yeah. so we have to we have to surgically clean that out establish a robust blood flow into the area and then these are, then these will heal and of course the addition of platelets through this prf technique is a tremendous tool for us because when we concentrate the platelets the platelets bring in a whole host of other healing mechanisms to make this area heal i think it's one of the one of the, the best adjunctive services that we can use and over the last 20 years of doing these i think it's brought been the biggest change for us in terms of getting these to heal properly yes definitely so it's exactly like you say what what uh, what we do is we clean it we use ozone after the cleaning to sterilize and to um, make disinfection then the stem cells what it, to put it in, in a nutshell what we want is we want to clean it and we want new blood cells in there we need the the blood in there so that's Correct. that's all about because where there is blood there is the chance to to rebuild healthy bones so that's all what we want we do not want to leave a cavitation after us we want to give the body the chance to 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 rebuild new healthy bone so we, we are actually very much into biological dentistry now but this is our passion so it was clear that we come to this point um, yes can, can you describe besides that um some components of, of of your biological treatment protocol so we heard about ozone we heard about cleaning cavitations about prf so the stem cells we put in there um what else do you use in your protocol yes well i'm a i'm a big fan of uh, high dose vitamin c yeah. iv uh, so we we do that typically the day of treatment and then the following day and then we encourage the patients after they get home wherever they go back home to follow up and continue to do that for the next six months yes um so we're a big fan of high dose vitamin c so how, we, how many grams do you use there for the uh, for one iv for example uh, typically 25 to 50 grams okay great yes. great that's yes. really great yeah yes and then um we also of course um we like the use of acupuncture and acupressure so on our staff we have acupressurists we have uh, several yes. that where they do acupressure before the treatment and immediately after and even the following day to help uh, open up these meridians uh, yes. so that so that we get yeah. um, good energetic healing that's great great uh, we love we love the use of acupressure yes and um then i think there are a number of other things that yes. we for example about vitamins because you told talked about vitamin c which is a really powerful tool um what do you think about vitamin d and and its importance about building new bone uh do you have a it's look at tremendously that? important i yeah. think it's tremendously important yes i think vitamin d and k2 um are uh you know at the uh, that's a that's a wonderful combination yes <laughs> <laughs> we do exactly the same thing is isn't that amazing yeah yes true so that's really 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 great really great yes. so we, we, so just for the for the for the watchers and listeners um vitamin d is very important for the for for many things you know but for example for the immune system in general for building up the neurotransmitters in the brain but why are now two dentists talking about vitamin d because we talk about surgeries and many studies found out that if if you have a a lack or, or you have too little of vitamin d uh, you cannot build healthy bone so this is what we want if we treat cavitations what we need is healthy bone if we put in implants we need the the bone grow on the implant and therefore therefore we have a close look at vitamin d for example in our office we really take care and are very um, um exact about that that our patients have a vitamin d level of 70 nanogram per milliliter 
because um, the Professor Shukrun is a very um, famous um, professor. He had many studies about that show that then you have a high chance that the body can build new strong bone. Exactly. You have the same yes. the same procedure. You also support and give the supplements or for vitamin D e or take care that the yes. patients are up there. Yes, we encourage them, of course, to be doing that. And most of the physicians who refer to us um, yes. are overseeing that part of their treatment to make sure that their vitamin D levels are sufficient. Yeah. So you 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 told me that um, you, many chronic um, disease or, or pa patients with chronic disease come to your office. Um, do you have also patients who who say, okay, please doctor, you're my only chance, and uh, please give me back my health? And you know what I mean. Um, Almost every day. High expectations. How do you deal with that? In the in, with communication with the patients, with yourself, and how do you deal with that? You know, we, we, we can make a really, really big difference. How do you deal with the expectations? We have it every day, like you said, yeah. Well, that's a terrific question, Alexander. It really is, because as you know, that puts uh, quite a burden on us uh, to think that a patient would come in and say, you're my last chance. Um, and I don't really want to shoulder that whole responsibility because yeah. I, I, I want to offer everything I can. And in my own case, um, I'm, a, uh, I'm a Christian dentist and, I, and so I'm, I'm giving, I, I tell the patients, I can do everything I can uh, to, to help you to heal. But I, I tell the patients, you know, God's in response. God is responsible for your healing and your relationship with him is going to help get you through this more than just me doing the surgery. I think I can do the surgery beautifully for you. And I, yes. I we're going to remove these metals, yes. but um, there's more to healing than that. Uh, for example, and you know this from, from experience, if a patient comes to you and they have very little hope, and uh, spiritually, they're a wreck. Um, their their chances of recovering and thriving are not as great yes. as if they're emotionally and spiritually healthy. Yes. So I think that's a huge component to someone's healing. And I know I I actually experienced this in my own life um, when I got sick years ago, and we thought I had ALS. I thought I had ALS. I was, yes. I was convinced, I was convinced of it, it, which is almost as bad as having the disease. Yes. Um, and it, my, it looked like my future was so bleak and there was not, I had, uh, I know what it is to lose hope and that's a very dark, sad place to be. Yes. And your potential for healing is not good when you get to that place. Yes. Definitely. So for me as a Christian, who's, who I have now a hope in, in the Lord and a relationship that, that, that helps me that ha has transformed my life. And I want patients to also understand that, that transformative healing that comes from having hope in, for me, it's God and it's Jesus. Uh, yes. Maybe for others, it's, it's another, but it's, it's bigger than yourself. Yes. Yes. So, for, for example, one picture that I use um, is I said to the patients, okay, look, you have been on the way in, uh, in your life for 60 years, and it's like if you're wearing um, a bag on your back, you know what I mean? Yes. So, yes. through the life, is, we call it rucksack. Is it rucksack? Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. Okay. I first day. <laughs> so, you have this, this bag on your back, and through the whole life, there are many stones come in it. Yeah, many stones, yes. small stones, big stones. Mm -hmm. And if you have been on this way, your body gets weaker and the weight is getting heavier. What I, I cannot promise healing. You know, we see it very often. We see, we see healing. We see improvements. Sometimes in several cases, we see nothing. 
Okay. Right. So, but what I can promise you, and this is what I say, I can promise you when we fix the dental situation and take out the toxins, the take out the mercury, mm. we take some stones out of this bag and the, 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 the bag is not as heavy as before. And maybe your immune system or your body has then a better chance for recovery and for it to get healthy. And what I can promise you, we can take out the stones. You do not have to carry root canals. You don't have to tear, carry mercury and then uh, you're on better chance to get healthy and so this is the the reason why it very very often happens like this and yes i also um um say what dr klinghardt says who is very he's a german doctor but he has a also famous clinic in seattle in the u.s and he yeah. says about 70 percent of all chronic diseases come from the jawbone come from the teeth so this is a yes. big chance and it's the stone what we're taking out uh, from the from the back here is not a small stone if you talk about no. 70 percent it's a big stone and i would say i always suggest use the chance to clean this area let's mm -hmm. take out a big stone and let's see what happens in many cases you know it it, it uh, we have improvements almost every time we have healing sometimes, but if we do not see anything, we did not do anything bad, you know, but we, 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 do, we do the remove the stone. So maybe the key yes. to healing is somewhere else. We are, we are not, um, we are not God. Yeah. Yes. And bad. you know, I think that's a beautiful analogy. Um, and we know that these are magnificent bodies. We, we're, it's amazing what, these bodies tolerate and what the, the toxicities that we're exposed to and yet we 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 manage to live and most of us live very you know we we live uh better than you would expect with all of the toxicities that we're exposed to it's amazing yeah we have magnificent bodies and so often you're exactly right when we remove a big stone when we remove uh, when we remove one source of infection it's amazing how the body rallies and can begin to spiral back to health that's great that's great we, we we can help it and the body itself can manage can deal with so many things yes yeah, the power yes. of the body of the self healing is is, is it's gorgeous it's it is truly so okay we are two dentists we always talk about uh, teeth and dentists but not only because we're dentists, but also plays a really big role. But let's put the teeth and the job on, on, on one side. What other um, things do you uh, recommend for your patients? What do you think is also one more key to success, to uh, the key to health besides the teeth? Sure. Um, for me, for my patients, it's clean water. Okay. Uh, clean air sunshine yeah sunshine the physical activity yes um to sit especially in front of a computer um all day long is a recipe for disaster we have to be we have to be moving and we have to get fresh air sunshine and clean water yes so i those that's very important for me. And then, of course, um, if we're not eating organic food and nourishing this incredible body that we've been given, uh, that too is, uh, there's probably nothing more important than that. Yeah. Do, do you have an advice for, for the listeners um, for to, to clean the water? Do you, you suggest a certain device or how do you clean the water? Great question. It's a great question. So in this country, um, I think obviously there are all sorts of different filters, but I use a particular filter that not only removes chlorine, but also removes fluoride, fluorine, because it's a common practice in the United States to add fluoride really? to the water system. Wow. Yes, which we think is 
terrible mistake. Yes, we, we, we had that many years ago in Switzerland, right? I don't know wh which country they tried to, to put it in in order to reduce the decay of the teeth, but it did not work. But, but yes, no, it does not work, but it's still, it's a terrible contaminant. Yes. And, uh, and of course it interferes with our thyroid function and um, really it interferes with every cell in our body. So we want, we like clean filters or um, another way to get rid of at least the chlorine in the water is using a reverse osmosis yeah. type of water filter. So how about you? What is it that you like to use for clean water? Well, we also have, um, we, we use, the, the water here is pretty clean, but it's not, it's not perfect, of course. Um, we uh, use filters and some kind of energetic information, uh, which prove that it um, causes the Emoto crystals, you know? Yes. And it's just uh, energetic information. And it's really, really awesome to see. And some, some people taste it and you drink more water and also um, the animals if you put them this water and normal water they go to the the, the higher energetic water that's that's mm. uh, kind of the same but a little bit different approach than you yeah yes i like that though yeah um so in my opinion I agree totally with you in my opinion uh, um there is also to take care of the sleep to have oh, a good sleep course. place, sleep, get enough sleep. First of all, enough sleep. Um, yes. Good sleep, it means uh, um, long terms of deep, uh, deep sleep and uh, REM phases. And yes. especially, and you mentioned it before, and I, I listened very closely, um, also the emotional situation, the relationships, you know, you have to take care about our relationships and to be together with people um, who we like, who we love, and who we like, and keep distance to negative people, or so you know. This is just take care about of our, of our relationships because the human being is a is a social social thing. Yeah, absolutely. And you know, um, as you know, Alexander, when someone comes to you with a chronic disease, and you do their dentistry for them, yeah, they're much more likely to heal if they have family support and if yes. you know it one of the things that is the most difficult thing to overcome is to have for example a a female a woman come to us whose husband is not in support of what she's doing yeah. or if they have a negative relationship the ability for her to heal is um it's decreased many fold yeah yeah I'm also a great fan of Tony Robbins. Um, and yes. he says, for example, that um, the, 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 the thing of choosing your, your relationship, your partner uh, has a very big influence, not only on the quality of life, but also on the length of your life. Yeah, it's yes. always a question of relationships and there are toxic relations and there are healthy relations. <laughs> yeah. That's right. So let's take care about that. Yes, that's great. Oh, okay. I think that's very important. Yeah. Um, the human being, uh, social beings, we could, you know, the interview is recorded in May 2020 uh, during the so-called uh, Corona crisis, COVID-19 crisis. So um, here in Germany, have we had, uh, yeah, we had a shutdown with um, isolation of people and keeping them at home which is actually against nature we don't have to discuss here if it's necessary or necessary or not you know we don't want to get political here um but what what do you think when we have, have to deal with a virus no matter if it's called influenza or corona or 20 sure. next year another name yeah we never had before sure. so um what do you think what our, are our chances in these times? That's a great question. And to me, and I don't mind saying this, I think the, I think the response to the coronavirus has been mishandled worldwide. Yes. It's been, a, it's been, um, it's been fueled by um, media hype. Um, it has, 
it's not been based on reality. Uh, the idea, for example, of wearing a mask um, to a public place is uh, bizarre. It has, uh, there's, no, there's no medical precedent for doing that. And there's, uh, it's of no, it's, uh, it, it does more harm than good to restrict your own <laughs> oxygen yes. and to breathe CO2 in instead of, so yeah. all of that to me has been a mistake. Yeah. And um, viruses run their course. The way to handle this is if you're a chronically ill people, Ill, Ill person, isolate if you if you wish. Don't isolate from everyone. You must have social relationships in order to thrive, and those relationships also help stimulate your immune system to isolate, um, and then reemerge hoping that you're going you're, that your immune system is going to continue to function properly is incorrect it yes. will not you're going to be much more prone to disease yeah. if you don't continue to stimulate your immune system so this whole idea of isolation uh, when we're in one of these pandemics uh, to me is is absolutely absurd um, you're right we're social people for me to isolate during this time would have been a terrible mistake. I would have been depressed. Um, and some of our dearest friends have chosen to isolate. I'm telling you what, they're not the same today. Mm. Yes. They're, str they're struggling. They're struggling. They have negative, uh, a negative outlook on life. Uh, we have to, what we have to do is protect this amazing body that we've been given and we'll be resilient. Even if we get the disease, um, we'll be able to handle it. Definitely. This is not a ter this is not a typically a life threatening disease okay. for anyone who takes care of himself. Yes. This is a, this is a, this notion of isolation to me is a terrible mistake. Yes, definitely. And uh, I can suggest or. or just to to listen to the Tony Robbins podcast because he has recently done a, a interview with six experts from the USA really from Stanford University the podcast lasts about two hours and it's really amazing facts about that and it's so you know in two or three years if when we look back to this time I think we um, we will see which big mistakes we did make and Absolutely. you said it you know to to make isolation um, is only sensible for a very, very small group of chronically ill patients who are, yeah. have a, seven, a certain age. So that's it. It's no yeah. reason to shut down the whole economy for, 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 uh, for the whole world, or for the USA. Um, and we see here already the numbers of suicides are rising very high and they oh, yes. will continue rising because what happens, the economy shuts down. Uh, you have... Um, Many people lose their work and have more and more troubles, more and more yes. aggressions, depressions, and all that will, really, yeah. uh, will lead to higher suicide rates. This is just one effect, you know. And, and the, uh, only the idea there is a virus outside, let's go inside and hide, hide until we go out and the virus has been has disappeared. It's just, it's just, it could be, I don't know. It's unrealistic. Well, Never well was. it's it's uh, there's nothing whatsoever about that that is based on science. There's nothing about that that's based on science. We we have um, I heard I heard er, recently this um, this has not been a this has been a pandemic of words. This is <laughs> <laughs> yeah. this has been. This has been the media and the politicians driving, uh, driving a disease that could have already been handled, in my opinion, if we had just let it run its course. Um, yeah. This has been a media that's driven this to the point of hysteria. Yeah, mm. completely right. And, and again, as we talked before, it's, it's up to us to, to, um, to think about our relations, our relationships, and let's, we have to take care 
about our relationship uh, towards media yeah who do we listen well, true. to what what do we believe what do we let our in, into our ears and into our brain so this yes. is the one thing and, and we, we have the chance you know when a virus comes in i have a beautiful body as you say and i have an immune system so i i'm responsible also for myself so and mm -hmm. then we are back again to our our both work um we, we have certain tools for our to boost our immune system yeah get rid of the cavitations rid of the um uh, root canals rid of um the, the the mercury get vitamins get healthy food get good water get good relationships get good sleep so that's that's a lot to do yeah let's do yes. that yeah let's do that <laughs> let's do that <laughs> okay so wow was amazing Stuart, I'm very thankful and very grateful. And we we mailed, I don't know, one, two weeks before, and we yes. met here, and it only took one second, and our frequencies <laughs> were like this. Yes. <laughs> it's really I great. agree, it's just, Alexander. Just a big, big honor and a big pleasure to have this, this amazing talk with you. Um, thank you. Thank you very much. Um, and i wish you all the very best you're an amazing person amazing doctor and um, i think with your level of energy and your spirit and your mindset you will be able together with your colleagues and uh, over the world to to make this this place really a healthier and a better place like we we have the I agree. as dentists to contribute yeah that's all we do we do, and thank you. What a what a privilege to spend this time with you today. Yeah, uh, I, you. I I can't wait to come see you. <laughs> yes, definitely. So, yeah. have a good time. All the best. Bye bye.